So first tell me your first and last name. Lori Wilcox. And how long have you been working at Palmer's, Lori? Over 25 years. Do you know what year you started? 1988. 1988. And where were you guys located in 1988? Uh, we were working out at Glenn's garage in Rancho Cordova. Did he hire you once he started building the Quicksilvers? Yes, I actually started working for him about March, April. Yeah. And he went into business January of 88. Yeah. And so the first products he made were probably started building, he started working on some of the Sheridan guns and then he started, yes. you know, he innovated and made the, the Quicksilver and then orders started kind of pouring in once he was advertising that. Exactly. You played with the Dogs of War too, right? Yes, I played with the Dogs of War. What were some of the early uh, Palmer's guns that you were using when you played? I had the first Tornado. I had a custom-built Nelson-based gun. I always like the Nelson-based guns because they're lighter weight. So there's your Tornado. Yes, and, this is my Tornado. And it's still in pretty much the same configuration. Oh, yes, exactly. Huh. Awesome. Can I you flip it over? I would it for anything. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> Do you remember when your Tornado was made by Glenn? The Tornado was made in the early 90s. And it does, you said it was the first tornado, right? The first tornado. So it predates the one in the EMR Museum? Yes. So then would you say it's 1989? It could be 1989. It's so long ago I don't remember. How many other tornadoes do you estimate Palmer's made? Um, Palmer's made, I would say, 12 to 15. 12 to 15. And most of the players using them were Dogs of War players? No, or... I would say Dogs of War uh, Three or four of them, the yeah. rest we shipped out across the country. When did Glenn decide to stop building tornadoes, or was it just that orders never really came in for him? He built the tornado originally just for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted his semi-system on my gun, yeah. um, and then a few other people wanted it, so uh -huh. um, he built a few, but he stopped building them because they're not nearly as air efficient as the Sheridan and Typhoons. Yeah, and they cause a lot more internal problems. Right. So, um, in all honesty, they're inferior to our Typhoons. Yeah, they really are. Or Blazers, so uh, you just quit making them. One thing that I noticed about the Tornado is it uses a Hurricane-style switch on it, which reminds me of the very first uh, semis that Glenn was making. Right. The very first pistol semis that Glenn was making after uh, mm -hmm. semi-rifles. So. I know I've seen a couple, or I've seen pictures of a couple of Glenn's semi-pistols, semi-Sheridan pistols that use that switch mounted with a wind textile frame, just like the Tornado. Mm -hmm. So it makes me think that probably when he built yours, it was before he integrated the switch into the grips. Kind of the main way that Typhoons and Strokers are produced. Right. Does that make sense? Um. I mean, basically what I'm saying is the first switches for Sheridan guns were mounted very similar, or for Sheridan pistols were mounted very similar to Tornadoes on the no. front. You don't think so? I know so. Um, the first real semi-autos, he built, okay, I should take that back. He did, he built two. He built uh -huh. a double barrel yeah. that had that... Uh, uh, that switch configuration. And then we did uh, P... 101, mm -hmm. which had that type of a switch. And did those predate the in-grip switch? Yes, they did. Yeah? Huh. Yes, they did. So they could have been either, he had already used that Wintech frame on some Sheridan semi-autos, so he knew that that would be an easy configuration, or it could be that he built it at the same time. It wasn't fast enough. Oh. Going into the grip was better. Yeah, that makes and sense. Actually, he's not the first one who went into the grip. Yeah, who was the first person to go into the uh, grip? The first person, and he, you know, showed Glenn, uh -huh. uh, was Jerry Helwitz. From, uh, from um, Fox Hunters. Fox Hunters. Yeah, gotcha. And it was the, basically the first stroker. Uh huh. You used your tornado up until you began using a blazer, is that right? Yes. And when do you think that change happened? 
about 95. 95. And when did Glenn start kind of developing the Blazor system? Uh, I would say around 93, 94. Okay, and yeah. then the working prototypes were probably developed 94, 95? Right, he built his first one, just one. Yeah. And then we did a, a 10 prototypes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, we did not put 10 out there. Yeah, I mean, you didn't put any out there, really, because no, they were just for internal it was use. internal. Craig and I used prototypes for about two years before we okay. went so, on the market. Okay, so you probably used, you and Craig probably used uh, prototype blazers from maybe 94 or 95 until maybe 97 when they, were, they began being introduced. Yeah. So the first batch of blazers was about 60 or how many bodies yes. do you think? Um, probably they had a batch of it about 100. Batch of 100 and the first bodies from that batch were released around 96, 97. Yes. And the, you and Rick both started shooting uh, guns from that first batch. Well, yes. Because I remember in My one... My laser is double, double 007. Yeah. So I have the seven. I, I know in one issue of Paint Magazine, there's an article, I think it's Paint Magazine, where there's you and Rick. APG, it, it, with uh, you and Rick both shooting, I thought matching blazers. Yes, we had uh, Yeah, matching. and so probably the, the date of that issue is probably three or four months after when they were first initially. Yes. Yeah. Anything else to add to that? You're still working at Palmer's. Palmer's still... Going strong. Going strong. And where are you? Where's Palmer's located now? Our address is 4212 Roseville Road in North Highlands, California. Cool. 95660. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. <laughs>